Hello and welcome to What's In It For Africa, the Inside The Issue show with me, Uzo Madu. On the show this month, Brexit for Africa. The UK referendum on whether to leave the European Union or to stay will take place on the 23rd of June. Now, the debate around the referendum has really focused on three key issues, British sovereignty, trade and immigration. And to a lesser extent, the Brexit for Africa debate has also reflected these key three issues. Now, in terms of sovereignty, the Africa for Brexit debate really looks at how the UK is unable to enter international trade negotiations and agreements because of its membership to the European Union. And linked to that in terms of trade, it is also critical of the European Union's common agricultural policy and how this distorts trade between the EU and Africa. And last but not least, immigration in terms of the UK's approach to EU migrants compared to non-EU migrants. And we're going to be speaking to the experts to help us find out more. We will be speaking to Vice President of the Nigerians in Diaspora Organization in Europe, Chinadu Madice, and also the Member of the European Parliament, Jude Curtin Darling. But before that, let's have a look at the historical context of the UK-EU relationship. British membership of what was then the European community in 1973 proved to be quite difficult because the UK always felt quite separate from Europe. However, economic difficulties and um, its disengagement from the empire meant that membership was actually more and more attractive but also inevitable. Now, the EU has had an impact on British foreign policy towards Africa and vice versa, not least because Britain turns to the EU in order to share African policymaking processes and strategies, but it also seeks support from the European Union to implement its own policies towards Africa. Another aspect of this relationship is the fact that um, Britain actually is one of the more interested European Union member states in relation to policies on the African continent. And in the current context, UK Prime Minister David Cameron within the EU has pushed for more um, focus on African issues. So we spoke to Chinedu and asked him about his perception of the European Union and whether it makes for a good trade and development partner. Importantly, the um, tariffs and, and policies that have encouraged the growth of uh, uh, businesses in Europe all be to the detriment of Africa to some extent. I mean, if we look, for example, the uh, common agricultural policies, common fishery um, uh, policies, for instance, and all the trade tariffs associated with that, these are not to the advantage of um, uh, benefits of Africa. Um, if I uh, particularly look at the fisheries policy that has the advantage or gives the uh, advantage to these large fishing vessels, and the consequent um, environmental damage they do to to um, the Atlantic coast, you know, all the uh, um, African countries around the Atlantic coast survive. There's a lot of um, uh, businesses that uh, thrive on fishing, and this has been somewhat uh, decimated by these um, huge uh, vessels that have been empowered by that uh, fisheries policies. Um, the same way we look at the agricultural, common agricultural policy as well, this is um, to the detriment of the African farmer, you know, it gives so much uh, uh, boost and power to the European farmer uh, in such a way that the African farmers find it very difficult to compete, you know. So these are barriers that um, have been detrimental to uh, um, the African continent, uh, if you take this, you know, into consideration. Um, I suppose if, if we look at the other side, if um, then, say, Britain is out of this common union, there is that uh, potential then for the African farmers to have a better deal trading with them. Um, 
uh, uh, with Britain, you know, so negotiating better uh, policies and business relationships with Britain, and, uh, and obviously, hopefully, circumventing those uh, tariffs and policies that are in place against the the um, African uh, continent and African business uh, uh, endeavors and pursuits. And keeping with the current context of discussions, let's now look at the key issues around the Brexit for Africa debate. One of the main arguments is that the European Union's common agricultural policy in the way that it subsidises European farmers actually means that African farmers are at a detriment and cannot compete on the European market. Now this is well documented and it's very important for the African economy since 70% of Africans are involved in agriculture. Despite this, what needs to be borne in mind is that the common agricultural policy will still exist even if the UK leaves the European Union. Also, the UK historically has been a vocal voice and calling on the European Union to change the way its policies affect African farmers in terms of EU subsidies given. Additionally, we need to consider that the UK will be in direct competition with the European Union on many of its policies, including the common agricultural policy. So, therefore, it might be under some competitive pressure to keep the status quo. Another argument in favour of Brexit in the African context is that if the UK were to leave the European Union, it would enable it to strengthen its trade relationships with African Commonwealth countries. Now, this is true to an extent because actually the European Union does have exclusive authority to negotiate and agree international trade agreements. And so therefore, the UK leaving the European Union would enable the UK to trade with other countries countries freely. But with this argument, it's also important to consider that uh, the UK, in disengaging with the international community in terms of trade relations, actually happened way before the European Union membership. And also that other European Union countries have been way more successful than the UK in engaging with Commonwealth countries. So we asked Chinadu his opinion on uh, the UK's re-engagement with African Commonwealth countries. Well, if you put it in context that 50% of UK trade is within EU, right? So if they leave the Union, um, what we'd expect is UK making sure that they have those bilateral agreements with their fellow EU or oh, with the former EU um, partners. Um, so Africa will be somewhat at the end of the, the chain, you know. I mean, being optimistic about that, hopefully it gives us enough breathing space to put our house in order as well, you know, uh, get our structure, infrastructure right, uh, make sure that um, uh, all the negatives that we currently have that will be distracting from, from uh, conducive business environments in Africa are addressed. And finally, immigration. It's really at the heart of the Brexit debate. And the argument here is that um, EU migrants have preferential access to the UK over African Commonwealth countries. Now, the free movement principle in the European Union obviously doesn't extend the same rights to African Commonwealth countries. However, it doesn't necessarily follow with any certainty that a UK exit would mean more preferential access for African Commonwealth countries. And recent UK Home Office policy actually gives us an indication that the UK is having a stricter approach to non-EU migrants. The policy implemented in April actually sets out a higher earning threshold for skilled non-EU migrants that wish to stay in the UK indefinitely. So let's speak to Chinadu and get his thoughts and opinions about non-EU migration to the UK and what implications a Brexit could have. We go back to that brain drain situation where the skilled workforce is leaving Africa uh, from the uh, individual personal perspective, obviously coming into UK will be uh, a better sort of um, environment 
uh, provide a platform for a better life if it's, you know, whether it's economic migration or otherwise. So individually, yes. Collectively, uh, brain drain. With the £35,000 policy in place in the UK, it further re-emphasizes that uh, the um, UK migration policy is somewhat self-centered, if I may use the word, um, self-centered that at £35,000, you're looking at skilled professionals from Africa to be in a position to earn that kind of money and settle here. Um, so if you, um, you, you won't find the African uh, strawberry picker coming in and in for 5,000 and getting a stay there. So it's only going to be professionals, your typical medical doctors, teachers and stuff like that who will be uh, living in Africa, coming in here and, and um, being able to demonstrate ability to earn 35,000 pounds and, uh, uh, and being resident here. So it will be detrimental, detrimental in the long run to Africa because of that brain drain issue that um, we've talked about. Are you for Brexit or are you against? You know, I am... I don't have a, an opinion from a, a Nigerians in diaspora organization perspective. Uh, from a personal perspective, I think uh, Brexit will be in favor or will benefit Africa in the long run, not immediately, but in the long run may be of uh, benefit to Africa. And when we spoke with Member of the European Parliament, Jude Curting Darling, last month, we took the opportunity to ask her the question, Brexit, what's in it for Africa? The, the Brexit debate has really big implications uh, for our partners in Africa, in my view. Um, we have a long um, cultural, historic, economic relationship with large parts of um, the continent of Africa. Um, very important relationships. And, um, and I think Part of the UK being inside the EU has allowed um, governments, particularly of kind of Anglophone um, Africa, um, to increase their voice in terms of the relationships with the European single market. With Britain inside the EU, we've been a driving force in ensuring that our trade policy opens up to um, the developing world that uh, tariffs are reduced, that the common agricultural policy doesn't lead to subsidies of exports, you know, the reduction in milk lakes and butter mountains and flower mountains, well, all of that excess from the common agricultural policy was a real kind of negative on in terms of African um, agricultural and, and food development. And I think Having the UK inside the EU has meant that trade policy and development policy has really been kind of bolstered. We're a key part. The EU is a, the biggest um, trade uh, development donor in the world. Um, and the UK as a government, together with a number of other countries, but particularly the UK, has really driven that development agenda. I think um, the UK leaving the EU would have uh, potentially negative impacts in terms of the EU's development agenda, the importance that it's given, the strength, you know, that commitment to 0.7% of GDP in terms of um, development cooperation um, funding, which for us is in legislation, for other member states isn't a priority. Um, in terms of trade, that balancing of trade to ensure market access, particularly for the least developed countries, but also um, for our historic partners in the African, Caribbean, Pacific um, region. For the UK, and, and if we left, um, our trade relations would probably continue. I can well imagine that we would have um, similar kind of trade deals uh, between uh, Nigeria and Britain or um, Kenya and Britain, Tanzania and Britain, South Africa and Britain. I can well imagine it. But the benefit for um, those African countries would be that they would only be accessing our market. They would be accessing a market of, what, 70 million people rather than the market of 700, uh, sorry, 500 uh, million consumers um, and I think you know that's it's just a weaker situation that's in terms of the economic the trade argument in terms of geopolitics 
Britain outside the EU will be a much weaker voice in global um, politics. And I think that weakens our global partners in a way. It weakens the strength of global um, diplomacy. So I just can't see any reason or situation where it would be better uh, for our African partners if we were outside the EU rather than being inside the EU. I don't think Brexit has anything for Africa. And as always, thank you for watching the Inside the Issue show. And remember to subscribe to our monthly mailing list. The link is in the video description box below or visit the website for more. Next month, we're going to be delving into the EU's anti-tax avoidance package. Remember, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter. And also now you can see us on Afroland TV and Quick TV Africa. My name is Izo Madu for What's In It For Africa. Africa.